The recent U.S. election made me think: What makes a good president or leader? Is there some sort of standard or criteria we can use to determine how qualified a person is? I thought, what better way than to learn from ancient Chinese emperors who ruled China for thousands of years and see what worked and what did not? I looked into ancient Chinese books and found ten qualities a great emperor must possess. So let's see if they can also apply to our modern day. The first quality is respecting heaven's will. Chinese people have always believed in Tian or heaven. Chinese emperors also called themselves the Son of Heaven. They believed they were chosen by heaven, therefore they needed to observe heaven's will and execute it on heaven's behalf. It's similar to the divine right of kings doctrine in the Western world. People believe that only virtuous individuals are favored by heaven. So as soon as an emperor or dynasty become tyrannical against the people, it will be replaced by a virtuous one. Ancient Chinese emperors will hold multiple worshiping ceremonies throughout the year in which they will pray to heaven. They will also take disasters as a sign that they were doing something wrong and will try to correct themselves. The Temple of Heaven in Beijing is the altar used for such ceremonies. It's four times larger than the Forbidden City, the entire Imperial Palace. That just shows how important respecting heaven's will is compared to everything else. Emperor Xiaozong of Song took this matter very seriously. He once said, "If a ruler does not fear heaven, then what else is he going to be afraid of?" This fear, or rather respect, ensured that emperors understood that they were being watched by a higher being or entity and would not abuse their power. A great emperor must also love the people. An emperor is the son of heaven, and the people are children of the emperor. The founding emperor of the Ming Dynasty, Hongwu Emperor, once said that worshiping ceremonies are not just formalities. Heaven entrusted the emperor with its people. Therefore, if an emperor wanted something from heaven, he must first take care of the people. What he prays for should not be for himself, but rather for the sake of the people. On the other hand, what is an emperor without the people? There is a Chinese saying: "The water that bears the boat is the same that swallows it up." If an emperor didn't put the people first, he would be overthrown. That's why Mencius Mengzi said in this famous quote, "The people are the most important element in a state. The state comes second. Last is the ruler himself. The emperor should be righteous." Confucius said many times that emperors set the example for his people. If the emperor himself is righteous, then who dares to not be righteous? And when the emperor is righteous, then people will follow him even without orders. On the contrary, no one will follow his orders if he is not righteous. Dong Zhongshu, a Han Dynasty philosopher, wrote, "The emperor should rectify his heart, then his court will be rectified, and then his ministers, and then his people and his land. Then everything will be in harmony. This is the ultimate approach to governing." So, what exactly is being righteous? It simply means one can discern good from evil, right from wrong. But there are so many temptations in this world, and it's easy to lose one's sight. That's why the emperor needs to have self-control and reject those temptations. Mencius said, "To nourish one's mind, there is nothing better than to reduce one's desires. A man with few desires will be able to keep his heart clear and steadfast most of the time. A man with many desires will be unable to keep his heart most of the time." Let me tell you a little story from the spring and autumn period. Duke Huan of Qi once asked his chancellor Guan Zhong, "Our country is quite small, and we're not wealthy either. But my ministers are all dressed fancily and ride in luxurious carriages. What do you think if I forbid such conduct?" Guan Zhong replied, "I heard that the ministers will eat whatever the duke likes to eat and wear whatever the duke prefers to wear." My Highness, you drink wine with each and every meal, don clothes with expensive purple dye, and wrap yourself in white fox fur coat. That is why the ministers are like this. It is written in the classic of poetry that if a leader doesn't carry out his own orders, the commoners will not believe him. 
Why don't you start from yourself if you want others to stop behaving this way? The Duke took his words and started wearing plain clothes and hats with fancy designs. One year later, no one in his country Qi showed any signs of extravagance anymore. It's quite simple. The emperor needs to lead by example and will naturally influence those around him. The Taoist Tan Qiao wrote in his book, When a ruler governs with frugality, his ministers will be content. When the ministers live with frugality, civil servants will be content. When civil servants live with frugality, citizens will be content. When the citizens live with frugality, the whole world is content. If the world is content in this way, there won't be any greed, fighting for fame, cheating, deceiving, or brown-nosing. To be content is actually a precious state of mind, as human desires are bottomless. Lao Tzu wrote in Dao De Jing, There is no guilt greater than too much greed, no calamity greater than to be discontent, no fault greater than the desire of gaining. Therefore, only by knowing the limit to one's desires can one be content forever. So now the question is, how can anyone achieve this, especially an emperor? The Hongwu Emperor said that humans have too many desires, such as lust, luxurious living conditions, fancy clothes, and delicious food. Anything that benefits oneself is a selfish desire. Only Li, or propriety, can regulate human conduct and restrain desires. This was the reason why people in the past created a code of conduct. As an emperor, he should never abolish Li for his own desire, or else he will corrupt his people. Only by complying with Li can he make fewer mistakes. Letting his desires run wild will no doubt ruin him in the end. You see, emperors also have rules to follow. Moreover, they need to be even more strict with themselves to set an example for their people. Among man's many desires, sloth is one thing an emperor cannot afford to have. In Shang Shu, the Book of Documents, there was one chapter specifically dedicated to this matter. It was advice from the Duke of Zhou to his young nephew, King Cheng, in which the Duke repeatedly warned the King to not be idle in his position. The Duke used many examples of previous kings who lost their country due to negligence and laziness, as well as examples of compassionate and hard-working kings whose rule spanned a long time. This article has served as one of the foundations of Chinese political philosophy for many generations of kings and emperors. Emperor Renzong of Song once received a painting depicting the scenes in this article. He loved it so much that he hung it up and looked at it every day. The Hongwu Emperor asked people to write the entire article on the walls of his palace so he could read it every morning and night. You might have seen emperors depicted in movies and dramas as always having fun with their concubines and getting angry easily. If this is true, these emperors would have gotten overthrown in no time. Chinese culture and history has so much to offer, but it's important to get your sources right. My wish is to share universal values from genuine traditional Chinese culture to inspire modern people's lives. Subscribe now and ring the little bell if you want to learn more. Now let's see what else makes a great emperor. So we just talked about how emperors can't slack off in their duty, but they can't possibly do everything by themselves. They need help. Guan Zhong said, a good king governs by rectifying his virtue, not by displaying his intelligence. Being smart and capable is the role of a minister. Being able to employ the smart and capable is the way of a king. It's not required for the emperor to be super smart himself, but he needs to find out where the smart people are. Confucius said that ancient sage kings knew all the talented people in the world by their names, their abilities, how many there were, and their whereabouts. Whoever can employ the most virtuous and talented people in the world is the wisest one. Confucius also said that it's important to make the best use of one's strength and suppress one's weaknesses. For example, a smart person could also be cunning. A brave person could be irritated easily. And a compassionate person could be exploited by others. It's the emperor's duty to best utilize everyone's talents by assigning them to the right positions. 
At the same time, the emperor must be open-minded and willing to accept his consul's advice and correct his mistakes. Confucius said, it takes bitter medicine to cure a disease properly, and it takes blunt advice to put us on the right track. Everyone makes mistakes as long as we're human, and so do emperors. What's important is that he's willing to admit his mistakes and change them. Three emperors in Chinese history did particularly well in this area. The first one is the legendary sage king, Emperor Yao. He asked people to set up drums outside so anyone could hit it to give him advice. He also set up tall wooden boards so anyone could carve his faults onto it. Instead of getting mad or ashamed, Emperor Yao was happy whenever people pointed out his shortcomings. That's why he became the model for all future Chinese emperors. Including Emperor Taizong of Tang, he always looked up to Emperor Yao. He was also known for listening to advice and welcoming criticism. It was recorded that Emperor Taizong would stick useful advice from his ministers onto the walls of his sleeping quarters. This way he could see them whether he was sitting or laying down. Emperor Renzong of Song is known for being one of the most benevolent emperors in Chinese history. There was a story of Bao Zheng, the emperor's minister. He once spoke against the decision the emperor wanted to make. Both his words and attitude were so strong that his spit got onto the emperor's face. Emperor Renzong did not get mad, but instead he took Bao Zheng's advice. Moreover, an emperor needs to know when and how to give out rewards and punishments. Rewards and punishments are equally important. Having too much of either side will lead to unwanted situations. And they need to be carried out fairly and reasonably. An emperor absolutely cannot give out rewards and punishments due to his own preferences. But since it's human nature to have preferences, emperors need to rely on having clear laws and regulations to make decisions. It's not difficult to come up with new rules and regulations, however, it's hard to not make any changes to existing ones. Emperor Taizong of Tang said that if an emperor's imperial orders are constantly changing, then people will start wavering and develop malicious ideas. Taizong used the metaphor from Yi Jing that compared giving orders to sweating. Once the order is out, it's like sweat has come out of the body, it can never be taken back. During the Song Dynasty, laws were changing quite often. Bao Zheng wrote to Emperor Renzong of Song to advise him of the situation and said that imperial waters are a powerful tool for an emperor, but at the same time it can directly affect the country's stability. If people see that waters can be changed easily, then no one will follow it. Then what use does it have to give out rewards or punishments? Ancient Chinese people valued xin or trust above everything else. If a person is not trustworthy, he cannot establish himself in society. If an emperor goes back on his words, his country will be in chaos. There are two phrases in Su Shu. One says, if a second order contradicts the first, then consider both orders ruined. The other one says, if an order contradicts a person's heart, then consider it useless. That means having laws and regulations alone cannot solve problems then what is the ultimate solution? We all know how comprehensive the modern law system is. It encompasses every aspect of our lives, and yet new laws are still being added every day. Does it prevent people from doing bad deeds? Only on the surface, and oftentimes does more damage than good. Close to 800 years ago, Ye Shi, a Song Dynasty philosopher, already saw this problem and what it could lead to. He wrote, the laws and regulations are getting more and more detailed by the day. It strangles people to the point of not being able to move anymore. People's wisdom is confined by all the rules, and therefore talented people are not able to achieve anything. Why doesn't it work? Because laws can't change people's hearts. The root cause of the problem is that people's morals are corrupted. Many wise people, including Confucius, have said that the best way to govern is by using virtue. A scholar from Shilin named Ye said, Morals and virtue are the fundamental way to enlighten people. Laws and punishments are the least effective method in controlling people.
During the three sovereigns and five emperors period, no laws existed because no laws were needed. Everyone believed in the divine and in karmic retribution. There's an old saying: "Goodness will be rewarded with good, and evil with evil." Who would do bad deeds if people understood they would get punished sooner or later? So the best way to govern, as proven by history, is to be virtuous oneself, awaken people's kindness, and change their hearts from the inside out. I've talked about ten qualities a good emperor should have, but honestly, it can apply to every president, politician, CEO, teacher, or anyone who wants to be a good leader. Which one of these ten points do you find the most interesting? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.